Hello, Internet. So today we're going to talk about MUX switches. Uh, MUX is just short for multiplexer. Uh, basically, you can have three switch inputs on one analog input um, using this, uh, which is great if you're trying to have multiple functions or, you know, do some switching. On a classic, you don't have any switch inputs. On a black, you have three. So if you've used up those three, this is another way to get more. In the classic case, it's, like, it's probably the best only way to do it, really, if you want multiple. Um, so you can have three switches, they can be latching or momentary, and then you have three different resistor values um, joined together, and then they're pulled up to 5 volts with a 2200 ohm resistor. I have another video on pull-up resistors if you want to watch that one, otherwise I'm going to just not address that today. Um, this can also be ground or sensor ground, um, either one works, uh, provided your grounds are good, neither should be a problem. And it's important that you keep the resistor values that they specify here. If you deviate from these, this will not work. So we have um, some switches set up on the bench today and an ECU uh, plugged into the computer. So it's, uh, first, we have to go to sensor setup, go to MUX switch, enable it, and then you pick from your drop down um, what you want to use. So analog input 6 is what we're going to use today. So I'm going to draw your attention to um, this voltage as these switches change. So let's go one at a time. So switch one, we can see you get 4.12. Switch two, we get 3.41 volts on analog six. And switch three, we get 2.49. So that is all these um, switches resistors do is give the ECU a different voltage input because uh, ECUs measure voltage. They don't measure resistance directly. They measure voltage. So that is kind of a, the most basic premise of how it works. Um, we're going to pull up the example I drew. So I'm not a graphic designer, and I like spreadsheets, so this is what we got. It's pretty ugly, but I think it'll illustrate the point. So this is basically the same drawing you just saw, um, kind of wired up to the ECU. So in switch one, if you're only going to use that, the ECU is effectively seeing um, 10,000 ohms or 10K. It's two different ways of saying the same thing. Um, and it's going to see 4.1-ish volts. It's a little bit of tolerance here. Um, not a lot. That's why it's important to keep those resistor values and do good connections. Because uh, if you do bad connections or use different resistors, the ECU will see a slightly different voltage and it won't know what to do. Switch two, same idea, different resistor value, different voltage value. Switch three is basically exactly what we just saw, different voltage, different resistor. But now what happens if you add them up, right? So all this is is you're putting these two resistors in parallel with each other, and you get a different, always lower than uh, the two added up, I might add. I'm not going to get into the math on doing uh, parallel resistors. Um, there are calculators online. If you don't even want to touch the math, that's totally fine. But you get a different um, voltage altogether. Same for switch two. You get a different voltage, different uh, resistor value, different voltage, different resistor value. And even if you do all of them, you get a different voltage and a different resistor value. So what this lets us do is the ECU knows if you have two enabled or if you have three enabled or if you have one enabled. And it can know whatever combination of the two that you have it's capable of figuring that out just based on what voltage it sees. So yeah, um, it's pretty infallible. There's no need to worry about like, oh, do I have to sequence them or do I have to use them one at a time? Nope, you can. You don't have to use them one at a time. You can use them all at the same time if you want. So what do you do with this, right? Well, what do you want to do with it? Um, so I have three examples worked in here, just a boost table. So you go into your boost setting and you type switch tables. Uh, you can't blend it in this way, but switch tables and MUX switch one. So if we want MUX switch one to, uh, yeah, it's, it's not the greatest example because it's, it goes to two and it won't let me uh, change this to be uh, a two. It's only a one. But anyway, you see switches on, the table is two, switches off table goes back to one um and yeah so you're trying to like okay i want to like turn it on to high boost turn my anti-lag on um you now have your anti-lag on and those switches are both at the same time and then you have a parametric output for who knows what but you can enable and disable that on a momentary it doesn't have to be a momentary it's just the switches that i had laying around today so yeah you can 
go back to low boost and anti leg. You can go back to all three. It doesn't really matter. It's a very versatile system, and for me, it's been reliable. Love it. It's a great way to extend uh, the feature set that the ECU has with less analog inputs. I believe the word for that is efficient. If you have any questions or comments, put them below. And uh, yeah, hope you learned something.